안녕하세요. 저는 티프니 선생님입니다. And in this video, we're going to be learning Korean. So what will this club bring us? We will be learning some basic Korean words and phrases, how to understand them, and most importantly, how and when to use them. We will also explore the differences and the similarities of our cultures. But before we start, let's take a moment to really think about what we already know about Korean culture and its languages. I'm sure that most of you guys are familiar with K-pop, BTS, Blackpink, SHINee, Big Bang, Girlfriend, Seventeen, Icon, Should I Continue? Not to mention the Korean dramas. Love Alarm, Heirs to the Beautiful You, Secret Garden, you who come from the stars, 100 Days My Prince, Princess Hours, You're Beautiful. The list can go on and on and on. But my personal favorite is Korean food. Mm. Kimbap, kimchi, topoki, pajan, and my personal favorite, bulgogi. Mm. Bulgogi and samgyeopsal, or in easier terms, Korean barbecue. Those are just a list of few things that we already are kind of familiar with as far as Korean culture. But how about the language? What do we already know so far? For those of us who already have some type of exposure to it and probably watch K-dramas or listen to K-pop, might already hear like the familiar terms, saranghae, Oppa, Nuna, Chowahe, Kajima, Hajima. But in this virtual club, we're going to go past the superficial and actually learn some groundbreaking things. And to kick off this club, we're going to start off with the greeting. So the first word we're going to go over is hello. And to say that in Korean is Annyeonghaseyo. Did you catch that? Annyeonghaseyo. Annyeonghaseyo, Annyeonghaseyo, Annyeonghaseyo. All right, so let's break it down a little bit. An young ha se yo. An young ha se yo. An young ha se yo. So in Korean culture, or actually in a lot of other Asian cultures, bowing is the norm as far as to greet people and to interact with each other. Usually in Western cultures, we are prone to uh, say hello with a simple wave or a hug or even kisses on the cheeks but in, in this case the bowing would be more of a social normality now these bows can differ depending on how much respect that you want to show towards the other person either or it is a great thing to include as you are greeting someone because that is accepting other people's culture the next word is yobo seo yobo seo Yoboseo, yoboseo, yoboseo. And yoboseo is also hello, but the difference between anyohaseo and yoboseo is that yoboseo is used when answering the phone. So yoboseo will be only used to answer cell phones, calls, things like that. Yoboseo. 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 The next word we have is manaso bangawoyo. Manaso bangawoyo. Manaso bangawoyo. And that means nice to meet you. Let's break that down real quick. Manaso bangawoyo. Manaso bangawoyo. Manaso means to have met, to meet, to met. And then bangawoyo means to be glad. So technically you're saying met to be glad. So you are glad that you met them. So in a literal sense, it do mean nice to meet you. Next we have tal tene sayo, tal tene sayo, tal tene sayo. And that means, how are you? With this word, you can say this as a question to mean, how are you? Or you can say it as a statement saying, I am well. 
ta means to be well, and tene soyo is kind of of a uh, time has spent or it has been passed. So it is kind of like a meaning of time has passed or spent well for me. So it can be roughly translated as how are you or I have been good. Finally, when it's time to depart, you might want to use chalagayo. 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 And chalagayo means goodbye. Or it is a casual yet polite way to tell someone goodbye, which it is still appropriate to use. As mentioned before in the last word, chal means to be well. And kayo means to go. So you will be saying, go well. So something that we have noticed in these words that we just learned, that they all have the word or the stem yo at the end. Anyahaseyo, yoboseyo, manasapangawoyo, chalchaneseyo, and chalagayo. So the yo is placed at the end of the word, and that is to make the word or the phrase respectful. So the Korean culture and the Korean language surrounds itself by a uh, principles of respect, right? So in the Korean language, there are three different levels of speech according to uh, your relationship with that person. Casual level. So for example, let's say that you and I were friends or you're perhaps younger than me. So you will not have to use the polite speech level on me. You can just speak casually. Polite level. So in a different situation, let's say that we're strangers or uh, we're coworkers or something in that matters. Somewhere that we're not really familiar with each other. So we will use yo. Honorific level. Now the highest level that I know so far is like the honorific, right? And so the honorific are used for more formal settings. So you will use this uh, language towards maybe the, the president or maybe the governor or maybe the CEO of a company, someone that has much more uh, authority or of an authority figure in the situation or in your life. So the easiest thing to do as far as teaching and learning Korean is to teach words that already have the yo at the end of it the polite level it is much easier to correct yourself when you don't need to use yo as opposed of needing to correct yourself when you didn't use yo so in most cases when in doubt at yo at the end there you have it we just went over greetings i hope this was a good pace for you all and i hope you guys enjoyed it if there's any comments, questions, or suggestions that you would like to ask for the next club session, please let me know in the comments below. It would be very helpful for me. Study well. Ciao, guys.